Hey, everybody, and welcome to Killing Time. This is the show that searches for entertainment that does not suck. We're going on our 11th year this year. Are you wow. excited about this? I am super pumped about this. Now, there were large hiatuses, hiati, Haiti. No, Haiti. Was, no, that's probably no, 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 Haiti. Never been there. Anyway, I'm Aya Zaktar, otherwise known as IA. With me, as always, is the Juice Pop, Just Bob, otherwise known as the Florida Gator. The man who'll thrash you by going on his belly. Rob. Yeah. We call him yeah. Rob sometimes. I, I like it. The man who'll thrash <laughs> you by going onto his belly. There's something there about like a gator roll. I didn't know where I was going with it, so I just went with it. So uh Yeah, I Good thought, good thought. Okay, so you're in for a treat because we got nothing today other than like what we actually spent our actual time on. Now, uh let's let's lead off with the flash. There was a new the it was on a hiatus. It was on its mid-season finale last year, and, and that left off. And we will be spoiling the show. If you're not caught up on The Flash, um, watch the show. Like, pause this, watch The Flash, and come back. Because, like... Good show. Good show. You're missing some good stuff. Yeah, so The Flash left off last season. Well, not last season. The mid-season, where Barry got flung into the future after defeating... Or at least he took this Philosopher's Stone thing, which is kind of... Uh, kind of withholds Savitar, for lack of a better mm-hmm. term of terms here chucks it into the speed force and also throws himself into the future, sees Iris being killed by Savitar, and then he's freaked. You know, as Barry has a tendency to do. He's like, oh no, Iris is gonna die. Dad died. Mom died. Joe's constantly kidnapped. Everyone's always kidnapped. Now Iris is gonna die, and he's all freaked out. So, in this episode, we've got The Flash. Before we even talk about the episode, did you like the episode? Did you like the new, the, the season premiere? We have Kid Flash a lot more, actually part of the team. You've got Flash kind of being hesitant what do you think of the episode i thought it was pretty good uh one thing of note is we jumped about a month into the future because him and iris have been living together a month so a month has passed he hasn't told anyone what's going on and he's flipping out um i think once again it, it it's not showing another side of barry but it's showing you know how much he cares about everybody else and not himself and things like that so uh that's always interesting um i'm getting a little frustrated with the Harrison Wells character the mm-hmm. uh waiting to figure out what's going on there it looks like you know with we're finally going to get some answers coming soon because it looks like somebody's coming after him from another dimension but uh but yeah I, I just uh, I don't see where that's going in it kind of takes away from the main plot for me a little bit at this point yeah I think that arc is going to probably fix its way out or it's actually going to figure it out as the season wraps up i think it's going to end in march yeah. or so they even tell you that it's like march 20 something 2017 when iris is killed that's the date essentially i would assume the season finale yeah or something close yeah. to that so we still have a lot to go on hr figure out where he's going like you were saying harrison wells's character uh or tom cavanaugh who i still think he's still a highlight in the in the show oh, oh the, he, the character is great i just don't know what his ulterior motive is and I can't even guess at it at this point. Well, the biggest surprise, if he had no ulterior motive, because everybody who enters Barry's life in any kind of authoritative or, <laughs> and, or, some, yes. and or fatherly position, other than Jay Garrick so far, the new Jay Garrick, not the old Jay Garrick, they always screw him. So mm-hmm. eh, I, I don't I don't want to believe that he's going to screw somebody over, but it's likely. And it's going to happen. Maybe he is not who he says he is. Uh, right. Based on that technology they showed off earlier in the season where he had this little... Uh, this little optical image thing that would cause people to see him as another person. Perhaps he's using that, changed his voice a little bit. Maybe he's not even Harrison Wells, although he does seem very, very close to him. But then again, if you know Harrison Wells and Earth 19, I think it is, maybe you could do an impression. You know, Maybe somebody could Mm -hmm. do an impression of me. Don't do an impression of me, although people do impressions of me. Anyway, I thought the episode was pretty good. I like the fact that Kid Flash is kind of graduating up He's training yes. with Barry, and uh, my girlfriend noticed that Wally's really happy, and Barry's really angry, and when we started the show way back in season one, Barry's really happy, and Wally's really angry, so like we have these parallel kind of things going on, where, not parallel, actually they're intersecting, so you yeah. have these different characters kind of having different arcs, I like what's going on there, Barry's a lot more situationally aware, because of Arrow, like, mm-hmm. Wally doesn't have Arrow, who if you haven't watched those episodes where Arrow shows up, first, he's very serious. Super serious. And everything's the end of the world. It's over. everything. If you it's don't look for done. this, you're a dead person. It's like, uh, yeah. Well, that's true. Because he shoots Barry. Like, yeah. he shoots him with a gun, not like, oh, no, and an arrow. Like, he shoots arrow. him with lots of things. Because he's freaking nuts. Yeah. 
but that's what Barry's trying to train Wally. Anyway, Barry's trying to change the future by he vibes into the future with Cisco to see what's going on. They actually go to the future, and the way they're going to determine if they change the future enough is by these headlines that are going by on a scroll. When Barry goes to the future in the last episode, he sees this little news report that says, uh, the Flash has ca- captured plunder, some kind of bank thief or jewelry thief or something, and on the bottom is a news scroll. So as they vibe in, they have all of these pieces of information. They're relaying it back to HR. He's writing all this stuff on the board. So if they cool can change, yeah, if they can change all of these things, these are like a checklist of things that are supposed to happen. Maybe they can change the future with Iris being killed. Although Harrison Wells has a pretty cool line saying something like, "A, a man ends up on the, his on his path when he's trying to avoid it." Mm-hmm. I was something like that, which I really liked because sometimes you're trying to avoid what you're trying to do, you end up steering right into it. So right. that seems like that'll be the checklist for the rest of the year. Like, here's the six things they're trying the to change. Here's the things we have to change. Right. It's yeah. the BuzzFeed article. The six things that Barry wants to change yeah. before Iris gets killed. Or Iris gets killed, not before. Let me tell you some things I really do like. I like the Killer Frost plot, her trying to avoid becoming Killer Frost, because we all know what Killer Frost is like based on previous dimensions and other things we've seen. That was pretty cool. Um, I do like the, uh, his name is escaping me, but the, the other um, lab guy character. Cisco. Who, no, no, no. The other lab guy at the police station. Oh, Julius. Sorry, Julian. Julius. It's, yes. His name is actually Julian, not Julius. Julian. Uh, yes. What's his last name? The kid He's, from Harry Potter yeah. is the actor. Tom uh, Felton. But, yes, yes. I actually like the actor. I mean, he, he's playing the part really well. He kind of is the guy you almost want to hate, but you can't help kind of like at times. Yeah, he definitely has a heart and there's some yeah. oddity to that, considering he's such a vile character in the first half of the season. But with the Christmas episode, you can see him kind of switching. And obviously, once yeah. Barry shows, hey, I'm the Flash. Um, by the way, I'm Barry Allen. I'm the Flash. Like, oh, now I trust you, cause, or I'm going to try to trust you. And they're yeah. moving that along a little bit. Julian has joined yeah. the team. Now, HR calls Julian Julius when he first sees him. Now, I suspect because the first time Wells meets Julian is because the last episode was Christmas, and Harrison Wells, HR, was drunk off his ass. Yes. Which is actually really funny. So if you want to go That's back to funny. last season, it's one of the few funny things I in that episode. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. Because he calls Caitlin by the wrong name, he calls Cisco by the wrong name. Yeah. Like, What's, it's, it's the police. They're going to come and shut us down. And then Barry's like, we're the police. It's like, oh, we're going <laughs> to shut ourselves down. So it was kind of a fun thing. I, I don't know if that was a continuity thing and or did HR try to have a fun name for Julian. I really doubt it. I think he was kind of plastered because he was really funny that last episode before the season break so i think it's it's a good start by the time this thing comes out episode two will probably be out so here's hoping they didn't shit the bed yet (laughs) yeah let's hope it's more of the same good stuff (laughs) and if you're wondering by the way you're like hey uh where else can i watch this stuff go watch go watch uh the flash it's on netflix the first two seasons and once season three wraps up i believe like the day or the month after that the entire season is going to end up on Netflix, so they signed a good deal. Yeah, I believe it's. I believe it's within the week of it ending. Um, Netflix will have the whole season, which is awesome. So if you want to get caught up, yeah. binge watch. A uh, little quick review of offline viewing on Netflix. I don't think I mentioned this last time. I've downloaded a whole bunch of stuff. I was making a flight across the country, or almost across the country, five hour flight, and the the episodes for the Flash about forty four minutes long, about two hundred megabytes a piece. So good compression, good video quality. I'm uh, not not like amazing or anything, but they won't eat up your phone or your iPad if you have one of those. So it's pretty handy. Once you start a video, you have about 48 hours to watch it. I don't know if there's, I don't remember what the timer is when it comes to just downloading and waiting. Because I'm really mm-hmm. curious what happens if you download a whole bunch of stuff before it goes offline. Like, does it disappear? Can you still? Oh, still? Inter- interesting thought. So, and today's, yeah. when we're recording this, this is the end of January. So who knows? Actually, I know what's going to be leaving. You can check that out on some other thing I do. You can always find that out on Twitter, on cnet.com, where I work, slash netpicks. Netpicks, that's a thing I do. That's a whole aside. If you only watch this show and you're like, who is this guy? What does he do? (laughs) Go go to cnet.com, slash netpicks, or top5.cnet.com, or look up my name online. There's a good chance you'll find me online. Uh, Rob, not so much. No. No online persona. Are you are you working on that? No, I let you handle that part. I just show up and talk about entertainment that does not suck. That's true. So the Flash doesn't suck yet. 
Like we said. No, Flash has been good, and which is surprising. I mean, three seasons, it's tough to continually be a good show for three seasons. And they ratcheted up every season finale. Like, yeah. Yeah. The first season, it's Barry going into a tornado that's going to end the world, the singularity. The second season, it's like, okay, Barry reset the timeline entirely. You're like, where are you going? But Whoa. also, there will be time travel. Enough about The Flash. Now I'm going to review an audiobook. What audiobook this week? It is Modern Romance by Aziz Ansari of Parks uh, and Rec fame. He is hilarious. Master of None. Master of None as well. Awesome. Awesome show. I think Master of None yep. is very easily bingeable. It's also very Oh, absolutely. Smart. Yes. And the thing is, some of the parts of the book, I believe, worked their way into the show. So here's the thing. I started listening to this book because I was thinking, okay, it might be a little lighter. I listened to a lot of nonfiction and thinking, okay, maybe this will be funny. It's a humor book. And it's really a sociology book because this isn't just Aziz Ansari going, well, it's dumb that we do this or it's crazy that we don't do this. He literally worked with sociologists and he surveyed and polled a bunch of people from different generations to find out how romance was in the old days compared to now. And he went to basically huh. some, some senior, uh, senior centers in New York asking people, you know, how did you meet your spouse? Where did you meet your spouse? What was your relationship like? When did you leave your house? that kind of thing. And what he found in the older days, people were marrying people within the five walking blocks of themselves. So people were just kind of meeting people in their buildings across the street and maybe five blocks out, which is very different than today. Additionally, oh, yeah. people were getting married much earlier, in the, like at maybe the women around their 20s, early 20s. And the idea was they wanted to get out of their parents' house, and which is a very different idea now. Eventually, it gets to like things like Tinder and the new like internet culture when it comes to dating and how there's this new form of maturity called emerging adulthood, which is now coined as a term, where adults go from 20 to 30-something, where they don't get married. They try to figure out who they are and just become who they're going to be instead of just going, okay, 20, getting married, and let's have kids, and that'll be it. And it doesn't matter if we're really in love, but this is good enough. She can cook yep. or she can pay the bills and i can cook. like it that kind of different relationship versus now where it appears everybody's looking for a soulmate a best friend a person who's unyieldingly patient but also funny right. and amazing and you're like what right. the hell apparently in the right. old days this wasn't the case so the book is only about i think it's about six hours long finished it in about two days because it just was really good and mm -hmm. not only was it interesting in its own information aziz ansari is peppering jokes left and right in there and the worst part of the entire book is the intro because the intro chapter, because you have a little sample to listen to it, he's just fucking around the whole time. He's like, I bet you didn't think I'll wait this long to talk about the book. Okay, we're going to get to chapter one. No, we're not going to get to chapter one. <laughs> and you're like, okay, wait a minute. How long? It's, I believe it's nine minutes of him just futzing around. And you're like, okay, what is the book? Like, is it any good? So if you get past that, and you heard this review, by the way, excellent book. Uh, it was way better than I expected. And as a social sciences kind of book, really good, good information in there. He even makes fun of the fact that you were so lazy that we listen to the audio book. I'll try to describe the charts as if they were there. <laughs> Otherwise, you're out of luck. Go get the book, you lazy bastard. He does say that a bunch of times. So I like it. Really good book, available on Scribe. Not a sponsor. They should be a sponsor, scribe.com. 30-day free trial. Use the offer code, Killing Time. See if it works, because we don't have a deal yet. I'm not working on that yet, so. Yeah. So I suggest. But since you told me about it, I have joined since last week. So there we go. That's one conversion. Yeah. Right yep. there. You owe, you owe us money. Uh, yep. Scribe. So, so how long is your commute? Uh, my commute's about fifteen minutes by car. Yeah, I think. And I usually listen to audiobooks. I have them on the on the stereo system has a MP3 plugin, so I I do that. Yeah, I think that might work. Scribe is pretty good. I finally figured out the little offline quirk. Uh, that's a whole other aside. But it used to be like I couldn't find how to actually play the offline stuff. If you go into the library section, it doesn't work, but they have a little separate offline tab. If you click mm -hmm. that, it'll work. I don't know why the app isn't smart enough to go, hmm, no connection, huh? Go to the offline tab and check. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so you have to intentionally go for it. But that's one yeah. little quirk. I'll, like I said before, lots of comic books on there too. Still not caught up on a whole lot of stuff. So The Flash is very good. Modern Romance is very good. And yes. Master of None, very good. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you can binge. I watched Master and None, I think, in a weekend. And did you uh, watch the new season of Sherlock? Yes, I did. Did just, you? Just finished that today. D did you like it? 
I I really liked the second and third episodes. Yes, me too. I thought they were very smart, very intelligent, uh, but you've got to pay attention to them because this is not one of those second screen kind of shows. No, no, you have to be involved in it because you can easily miss things. But that's what I like about the show. They're, it's very intelligent. People, they think it out when they write it. And it's rewatchable in some respects because you're like, you want yeah. to see if you missed the clues or not. Not that you needed right. to tell us this one. It's like one of the most praised shows. They didn't screw up. Is there a fifth season coming up? Do you know that? They haven't talked about it yet, but I mean, with the big names in that show, it is tough to say when they can have the time to shoot it. Yeah. It was- I mean, you know, Martin Freeman and, you know, Benedict Cumberbunch have a lot of other projects that they're working on. So that's why the seasons seem to come sporadically whenever they can make it happen. Yeah. And by the way, if you guys don't know, the seasons are about three episodes long. They're each an hour and a half. And they're each like, it's each like it's like a bunch of movies put together. It's like yeah, three movies. And they call it a show. And it, yeah. it, it for the most part, I think over the nine, no, not nine, the 12 episodes and the special, I'd say 60, 70 percent of them are good. Or like, yep. actually, yeah. not good, great. And the rest of yep. them, like, they're like, oh, that's okay. But yep. you don't need us to tell you that Sherlock is good. Just go watch it, because yeah, everybody says so. I mean, it's it's a great show. You know, I can't say enough about it. Pretty much. That's good, because you're not going to say anything else. We're ending this episode right now. It's already over. Episode's Done. over. Done. Bye, guys. Bye, bye. See you.